Hello, friends. Robert Pevin here, author of the Caverns of Creature series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are breaking down our picks for the top five and one worst, level seven, Bard Spells. Woohoo! Yeah, absolutely. I love Bards. I love Bard Spells. They are known casters, which means they don't get very many learned spells. Seventh level, they also have magical secrets, so you have access to every single spell in the game. Um, and all those reasons make it so you really care about what you're picking, and you want to make sure it's the best of the best options whenever you got options to go from. You're only getting, like, one of these. So which one you pick matters a lot. Fortunately, as far as, like, having hard times making decisions goes, this list is pretty booty. So <laughs> you are not going to be that pressed to, like, find the best one for you. There's, like, That's three ironic. options. It's ironic, because as hard a time I had choosing a top five list from this list... That means your options as a bard are that much easier. Yeah. You're like, wow, with only two of these being remotely optional, this is great. I can just really flip a coin if I have to. All right. Well, uh, um, oh, caveats. Um, yeah, Sam picks his spells in order one through five, best to worst, or best to fifth best. I don't. I just choose my five favorites. I have a hard time really, calling really this. Order fifth best in this particular <laughs> moment but sure there are a number there are uh it is kind of a robust list i mean compared to level six anyway so you know they're not the worst i think there's a lot of worsts on here yeah I also I'll, I'll just quickly say towards the end i will also mention like a couple magical secret options just briefly to be like if none of these speak to you these are magical secret options you should consider because bards get access to them so that's something you should always be thinking about Let's do it. Especially. All right. Um, yeah, you go ahead and kick things off this time. All right. My number one, it's Force Cage. Force Cage is a baller spell. Make your list. Let me see. Uh, I know it was considered. Actually, yeah, that was my uh, my last struggler. Force Cage is so good. It's so expensive, though. What, what are you it doing even with it? It doesn't the dust. Well, uh, maybe not. I guess not. But what are, what are you doing with Force Cage? It's so amazing. Putting anything you want in a box in a box. If it is smaller than 20 feet, which means like under huge, you can stick it in a force cage and it can't get out. And there's no save. There's nothing. It's just in a box for an hour. You don't concentrate on this. You just put it there. And now whatever you'd like to be stuck in the box is stuck in the box. It's great. This is a saveless saver die in the same vein as Otto's Irresistible Dance, where you just go, oh, hey, that ogre could be a problem for us. It's got class levels and something. I'm going to put it in force cage and we're not going to worry about it for the rest of this encounter. We can pepper it from a distance if we need to. You can make it opaque. You can make it so that there are bars. You've got all kinds of options when it comes to restraining and putting creatures in jail for an hour. And like, I'm pretty here for that. I think force cage is excellent. Plus, I, there's something about just pointing and laughing at something you put into jail yourself as a bard that feels deeply bardy to me. So it should yeah, be like, ha, look at you. You're stuck in a box. I think that's a great time. Yeah, wow. If you've got all right, I, I take this back. I'm seeing the value. Wait, can you cast spells at it while it's in there? Yeah, if you put bars, as long as you, as long as it can. So there's some, there's some little caveats. If it can, if you can shoot it, it can shoot you. So that's you know, keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, you can yeah. put, you can so, leave gaps, let things get in if you want. In the last an hour, I'm putting somebody in a cage, and I'm going to kill them. With vicious mockery. That's something you're allowed to do. You just keep making fun of them over and over again for a full yeah. hour until they die. Ah, uh, all right, all right. I, I feel better about that making my list. Yeah, I think Force Cage is yucky good. I've seen it cast a couple hand, like a handful of times. We're definitely the tier now. We probably should have this caveat to all these videos too, where it's like I've seen these spells ones of times, zeros sometimes. So like this, this tier isn't normally reached, but for what I have seen, I have thought Force Cage has been exceptional every single time. All would right. recommend. Easy number one pick. If you're a bard, like, what's my 11th level spell I pick? It's Force Cage. It's great. Alright, well, that uh, yeah, that was one of my iffy ones, but I feel pretty good about it now. Um, you're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go next. Uh, I'm wondering, I'm thinking maybe this one didn't make your list. I picked Teleport. Teleport's also on my list. Oh, is it? Okay. There's um, some real stinkers here, Bob. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, well, just when we were so like, I mean, yeah, uh, Force Cage made both our lists, but you were a lot more enthusiastic about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but teleport, I have to go back and look at exactly what it does. But um, it's uh, you know, you and the squad teleport somewhere. Eight willing creatures. Yeah, that's good. Oh yeah, this one's got the chart. You can. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's fun. That's uh, I love the chart. For That's readers, great. for uh, viewers at home that haven't like memorized the spell, there is, you roll a d100 depending on how familiar you are with the place and if it's a real place or not. Because there are outcomes that are like, you there's a false destination place that if you try to go somewhere that doesn't exist, you end up somewhere else, and the results lead to on target. So like you're somewhere within the vicinity of where you want to teleport to to similar area, which can just be anywhere on the same plane of existence that does vaguely the same thing as where you're trying to go which i think is deeply funny and then you have off target which is like you're a little bit far away from where you actually want to end up and then there are mishaps which are normally just like damage and rerolls so i think it's really cute i love that the dm does all of the rolling here because they basically get to pick where you go to make sure that the narrative is as streamlined working with this spell as you'd like some dms can that are willing to like throw caution to the wind and just say, yeah, let's see what happens. I'm ready to improvise a whole session if you get off track and have to truck through to some weird random undead-fueled marsh for the whole next session. Let's do it. They can actually roll it. Alternatively, they can just fudge it and put you where they want you to be, where you want to be, and have it be a nice, cohesive, clean experience. I think it's excellent. I think this is a fun spell. Now, granted, yeah, well, they'll go for it. I was going to say, it's uh, you know, got practical value, and that inherent randomness uh, feels bardish to me yeah, i agree with that like, this... i want to oh i'm gonna do something useful i'm gonna get us the hell out of here <laughs> oh crap where are we where did we land i think that's a really fun experience to go through as really powerful characters that just end up in like a random hamlet in the middle of nowhere and they're like i thought you said we we're going to the city he's like i guess we got somewhere close listen maybe we're close where are we again they don't speak the language well we're gonna have to figure this one out <laughs> i think that's a very fun experience and uh, exchange that the spell opens up plus like this is kind of a spell that designates a tier of play, right? Teleport's a, we now have access to the whole of the plane. Where will we be going on this plane? We can access anywhere. Travel's no longer a problem. If we need to get somewhere, we can get somewhere. I think that is a good spell to have on a character sheet, just to say, we've reached this this specific environment. Let's have a different kind of adventure now that is uh, opened up and bars can do that. Wait a second. We're in Naples, Florida. <laughs> Shit. That is definitely a kind of event that can occur. I like the idea of, you know, you're trying to teleport to some evil uh, furnace of rage powering a demonic army or whatever, and you just end up in a random forge. And the blacksmith is just like, stumbles awake from a drunken slumber, goes, Oi, what? And just like looks around at the random party of adventures that spontaneously arrived in his, his little, I think it's great. It's so cute. All right. Teleport. Yay. Yay, teleport. Two What's for two. That? What? What uh what what number on your list to teleport me? Three? Twice. All right, so what's what's your number two? Etherealness. A yucky good, really list. powerful tool. Are we three for three? Yeah, these are the three that I thought we would have three for three. Okay. After this, I don't know what I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm scared. So Etherealness is really great. You can use it to scout dungeons. Your DM's gonna have to be like, oh god. If I don't want them to see the entire dungeon, I have to have contingencies for this, or I have to have a timer, or I have to have 12 other different things going on to make Etherealness not a I scout the dungeon and get perfect information kind of deal. It's an infiltration tool that's pretty fun. It can upcast to eventually get more parties in different interesting places, which is pretty cool. It definitely challenges an access of play that the DM isn't necessarily prepared for, and for all those reasons, I think it can be exceptional. I don't think it's the best bard spell on planet Earth, specifically for bards, just because they... I don't know why it doesn't scream bard to me. This screams wizard. This screams strategist. Yeah. This screams like extra planar explorer using math and nerd crap to like figure out how to go between worlds and whatnot. And this doesn't scream like, oh yeah, bards can totally do that. But it's on my list. So it should probably be deserve a spot here because it is a yucky good spell. It is a good spell. And I was thinking the same justifications you made for visibility way back when on that uh, second level list. You know, that's. Yeah, we're talking seventh level here. You know, Bard probably uh, doing something other than uh, you know stealing pastries off of windowsills or something. But uh, yeah, if you need to get away and uh, you've already used your teleporters, I don't know, whatever. 
Ethereum, this is there for you. I, I, this harkens back to our last video where you're using, you're playing in the streets <laughs> as a bard with six level spell slots, hawking <laughs> coin. This is the instance where you're stealing pies off windowsills as the bard that has seven level spell slots and uses etherealness to sneak away and eat the pie by themselves, which is deeply funny and something I really need to see happen now. But yeah, it's an amazing spell and uh, just even upcasting it. You get three more willing creatures. Uh, wait, uh, oh, three, including you. Three, so. including you. So three total. Right. So pretty good. I think it's really solid. I think it's a big headache. So make sure you talk to your DM about it if you want to take Ethereal and use it practically. Big headache for the DM. No concentration. That's nice, too. It also takes a while to get anywhere. Because, yeah, your speed is super slow. But you have eight hours of it. So, like, go nuts. All right. That was Ethereal-ness. Um, I guess it's my turn. Yep, right, this no, is no, no. where we things get shaky. All right, uh, all right. This one I chose, and I feel very confident about it as a as a bard. Project image. It doesn't make my list. I wanted this to make my list. I just don't think it's good. It's, no, it's it's not. But uh, <laughs> I I am envisioning bard specific uses <laughs> for it. The thing is. It's, I don't need the 500 mile range. Is that, is that <laughs> no. no? Yeah. Why, why would know. anyone need a 500 mile range? That's ridiculous. <laughs> I just need this to be across the room. I want people to think I'm over here, but actually I'm over here. And when the time is right, that will be revealed. And uh, I think there are going to be times when a bard in particular doing his music thing, uh, his showman thing, can uh, take advantage of that. So, like, I just think that there's it. So, the Trickery Domain Claire is going to feature called Invoke Duplicity, right? And it that feature is harder to use than I thought it would be whenever I played a Trickery Domain Claire back in the day. And I really like the feature. I think it's really interesting. Having a duplicate of yourself is very cool and interesting and fun. Illusion spells can already do this, though, right? Like, Major Image and Silent Image both can do this effect well enough most of the time. This is a little bit better in that like, you can have it speak and stuff. Is it 7th level slot better? Maybe not. Is it better than my last two? Maybe. But, like, I don't find it... Out. I agree that it's super bard. 100%. This is... This, uh, like, at minimum, a bard would do this just to get a chance to talk to themselves, right? Like, this is just a way that you can really lean into the egotistical, you know, in love with yourself from the mirror. What's the character's name from Greek mythology? I can't even remember. Narcissus. Yeah, Narcissus, that's the one. Because that's narcissism. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So you got that whole MO going that's really cute that you could do with this. It can be really fun. I can definitely, I could envision myself putting this on a character sheet and knowing full well I don't probably end up using it that proactively or that effectively all that much. Maybe that should be about, it in my right. top five, but. What if, uh, can you mimic yourself or have, have, have it look like you're about to cast a really powerful spell Get all the enemies to waste their turn attacking you, and then you know find out it's only an illusion. I mean, and then one, you actually cast the spell. Get one creature to attack it, and then everyone goes, "Why did that sword pass through them?" Oh, right, because it's an illusion. Where's the real bard? Yes. Okay. Well, still, maybe that uh, that makes the difference in the fight. It could probably I, not. I like my illusions to be flexible and cheap, and this is not flexible nor cheap. <laughs> so that's why I ultimately don't think it's that great. Again, if I can say, well, I can probably, with the right circumstances and some dim lighting, get the same effect out of a silent image. I'm like, I'm only going to pay five more spell slots and not need those little tricks. And I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, it all comes down to the list we had to work with. That's true. Again, like, like I said, I'm not confident this is worse than my other two options. So... <laughs> All right, let's hear one. So I, again, I defended the spell. I think I overly defended it last time. I keep waffling on it. I'm like, this spell is fine. This spell's bad. This spell's fine. This spell's bad. It's regenerate. A lot of hit points. And that's kind of it, but it's a lot of hit points at the right tables over multiple encounters, which could be really impactful. I don't know. To make your list? Yeah, I looked at it and I, I remembered the, the good points and the bad points. And I thought, you know what? I don't want to deal with it. It's not going to go on my list. Fair enough. Yeah, we this made a cleric's list, I think, for me. And I stand by that. If you're getting four-ish 
encounters where you're regularly getting close to zero within its duration, it's going to feel like a full heal in between them a lot of the time, and that's pretty excellent. Beyond that exact case, there's probably no reason to ever put it on a sheet, and that leaves it in this weird nebulous space. If you're a bard that knows those kind of rolling encounters you're going through and you want a healing supportive option that just gets the fighter, gets the barbarian, gets the paladin back to full HP every single fight... As long as, again, you have like four-ish, five-ish minutes between fights, I think this is great. If you aren't in that environment and you're doing one or two encounters, one big set piece, you probably have no business ever putting this on your character sheet. So, like, that's ultimately where I think it lands. This is probably the most niche of my list, but on the characters that it is good, I think it is very, very good. They just many of those characters. If you have any, like, healers in the part, I mean... The- yeah, the, you know, I know. I know you're talking about multiple encounters without a short rest. But uh, if you got healers in the party, I just you know, there's other healing options that you know, even if they're taking a bunch of damage between fights. I mean, how many fights are we talking about? A lot. I'm. It is a lot of fights for sure. It is again with like a short rest in between them. You would need to be having two short rest, two short rest. But I would consider this then being like a, maybe that's fine. Any more than that, and I'm happy with it. Any less than that, and I don't think it's worth it. I think because I also, I'm really down on most other healing effects, as you know, though, right? I'm normally not a fan of, like, taking things, like, anything that restores large quantities of hit points usually isn't worth the level. This is a case where it can just be a gigantic pool of hit points, and that could be worth its level. Like, compare this to heal, which is just a flat 60. This is going to heal way more than 60 hit points. It just has to do so over multiple instances of several different encounters, right? That's where it's... Is it good for for one creature? If you're getting in this kind of fights, all if you're getting in these fights after fights after fights, chances are is more than one of your party is going to be taking a beating. So, so yes, I would throw an asterisk, or I throw in a point to say you do expect several members of the party to take more damage than others. You do expect the barbarians, the paladins, yeah. the fighters, the front line to get hit substantially more. So the hit points matter more on the characters that are spending them more frequently. And being able yeah. to ensure the ones that are spending them the most have the most can be a way to leverage the whole party's HP. So what I'm, but what I'm thinking is that if uh, you get you know, more than one frontline fighter, this is only or frontline, uh, well, yeah, not fighter as in the class, but uh, a, yeah, attacker. Yeah, yeah. Um, then, uh, yeah, somebody's going to have regenerate. Somebody's going to be still in a lot of pain. Yeah, and you just have to trade it off. Uh, Movement encounters, it's yeah. fine. And again, that's in like the 5% or less of tables other, that this is playable in. So. Other options, though, you know, uh, like mass cure wounds or something, then you can, yeah, it's probably enough to get everybody up, but that's only for after one fight. Yeah, this is definitely something. You- I don't think this is on the same axis as any of the mass cure wounds or mass healing or more specifically, just because this is doing a very different job. This is specifically has the purpose of someone is getting a shitload of hit points over many fights. Mass healing word I put on sheets to say these characters are all up from zero now. That's the value I find it has. That is not remotely the value that regenerate has. Regenerate happens to get your paladin off of zero over and over again. That often is going to mean that the monster is going to hit them at zero to make sure they die because they want the paladin to stay down. So, you know, that's a juggling act. But, like, I think there, I think there is some mileage here to consider. I would yeah. say know your table before taking it. I would not recommend this to m- almost anyone playing at my tables or tables similar to mine just because I don't run that many encounters and you will not get that enough hit points out of regenerate like you're suggesting. But... All right. Um. So that was regenerate. I guess it's my turn now. Yep. We are. We're still three for four. All right. You got one more. Yeah, I got one more. What do I have? I'm I'm curious to see if they're the same. All right. Um. Oh yeah, I'm down to my last one. Okay. I picked uh magnificent mansion. That wasn't my contender. In my contenders for worst, but it's also not on my list. And I was like, is there a worse one than that? This kind of uh talk about why you like it. I don't. This is one the one <laughs> I was this is the last one I was looking at all these spells like, oh my god, which other of these pieces of crap am I gonna put on this yeah. list? I feel exactly so, the same about my last one too, don't you worry. <laughs> so I ultimately went with Magnificent Mansion because the uh well I mean it is it can be useful. It's I, I really don't like the effect. I think it could 
screw up your uh your your, your dm's plans or whatever just like the tiny hut thing and I, but i got to think what got to thinking about when we were talking about it and you know things we went off on tangents and he's got those hundred servants and you could bring in raw materials and have them craft like items that you can export from the mansion and either use or sell bobby and, uh, here's yeah. another video that we need to make and it's top 10 spells to have your own building simulator in dungeons and dragons fifth edition and this can make that list <laughs> yes they <definitely> would <laughs> but, um, yeah that's why it made my list i think that's respectable i also think there's something inherently super bardy about being like hey we're partying at my place it's just right through this door and then a magical door appears and the suave bard kicks it open and goes yeah yeah and there's like a uh, some like drunk barbarian doing uh, head spins on the table and his disco ball and all kinds of crazy stuff super bardy absolutely love that yeah. use of it i also love the use of it right where you can just make a new mansion every time so you never have to clean up the mess where it's just like you trash the place and then it's gone and you trash the next one is that practical for a dungeon the dragon's adventuring Probably not, but it is very flavorfully fun, and for that reason, I'm a big fan of it. I just, I don't find the Tiny Hut argument to be that compelling when Tiny Hut's a third level spell. You could have a a hero's feast in a magnificent mansion. You could, you could go all out. Imagine taking two of your known spells and spell slots on that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if this was one of those things where, I mean, it isn't. You can't do this a hundred times and make it permanent, right? No, because it's extra dimensional, right? This is right. Yeah. somewhere beyond the realms. If it did, if if it had that, it might be up higher on my list. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it did not make my list, but it could have. I feel about as good as I feel what about did? this next one. Symbol. I think symbol. symbol uh, I thought about symbol. Yeah, it's one of those spells where in the situations it's good. Oh my god, it does so many things, and those things are super interesting. It can make people feel hopeless. Like one of the spells in the game has built-in wording for making things feel hopeless. The problem is the same problem that most of these kinds of effects have, and it's just that there aren't a lot of encounters where you're playing defensively with it, and that's going to make it pretty niche. You need to know you're going to be using this to defend a space, and it's just not going to be most encounters. I have a really hard time putting this on character sheets. Is it better than Prismatic Explorer? Maybe not. Is it better than Magnificent Mansion? Maybe not. Is it close? I think so, and I would rather have this on my sheet than any of those two options, because I think the effects are particularly fun. Yeah, for a seventh level spell, I feel like they should let you make it mobile. I want to. I want to draw my big my glyph on a big blanket, fold it up, and be able to deploy it where and when I want. Yeah, give me give me deployable insanity. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> deployable hopelessness. <laughs> I mean, some of those wow. are really busted. Like you know, everything. There's of no repeated save stun on this. So if like if this ever lands, it can just be debilitating, right? If you ever have a minute to set it up in Strahd's house, uh? <laughs> so Strahd's really having good. a bad day with us. Uh, um, and it's, it also has the fear that makes people drop their stuff. I like that. Yep. I like insanity a lot. On a failed yeah. save, it's driven insane for a minute, and then it can't take actions, understand what things say, and speaks only in gibberish. And then it just moves erratically. That's cute. Yeah, I guess. I mean, well, yeah. Where do you use it? Do you uh, you take a minute to cast this. Hopefully, hide it under some leaves or something, and then uh, you know, wave a chicken wing and hope somebody comes to get it. Yeah, this feels like a a kind of thing where you play that you put this on an infiltrator character on an infiltrator bard. Maybe you're the College of Whispers or something, and you sneak into an assassination target's bedroom. You open their diary to the most recent page. You write your little symbol in there, and then you leave. And the next morning, they're found hopeless in the corner, curled up in a ball, crying. And that was, or you know, well, that's death. not a bad use. Death works too. Yeah, I think there are out of combat uses that aren't the end of the world. You can do that with poisons you can do that with a lot of things like killing people in their sleep isn't exactly a hard thing to do so that's where i'm not super high on it even for those use cases but it is a deeply flavorful use case that's cute i mean i mean the infiltration thing i hadn't even thought of that yeah you go in there you uh yeah, you know, put a big glyph right up in front of the on the other side of the gate or something you know the guards come to uh see what you want when you knock on the door and they pry and drop their stuff and run away and uh i don't know there there there's potential here i think there is potential here 
I would love to hear from the commoners of how they've proactively used symbol and if they did in fact cast it more than like three or four times in the entire duration of the remaining campaign. Well, it does say the item that you you cast it on can't be moved more than ten feet. So, uh, maybe you know, write it in a book, <laughs> chuck it over the wall. I, you also could get really nitpicky and be like, what if we move the chamber in which it was written in? Can we transport the symbol? And then you can, like, you know, pick up the, the do it in an outhouse, put the outhouse on the back of a cart, and then trek it places and say, like, we wrote it in there. Does that count? I don't know. Maybe your DM will be lenient and let it happen. Maybe your DM will be like, it has to be the long latitude and longitude of it that it matters. I don't know how it works. It doesn't say it beyond where it was written. So, you know. Yeah. All right. Um, are we done? That was my top five. Uh, fourth stage of the right. teleport or generate symbol. Uh, what did I have? I had teleport, etherealness, project image, magnificent, magnificent mansion, and force cage. Teleport. Ah, now the fun part. The worst. I think, I think we both probably both chose the, this one. Hit me with but, it. Uh, was it Arcane Sword? It was not Arcane Sword, but it's my this might runner up. Arcane Sword is pretty terrible. Goodness. Thank goodness. I thought you were going to choose Arcane Sword so we, we wouldn't have two spells to talk about. But I chose it anyway because it's so damn insulting. It's really insultingly bad. It's just basically saying, did you not know you had better options? And that is demoralizing because you definitely have better options. Arcane Sword. That's... Uh, More Cane and Sword and Arcane Sword are the uh, right, SRD right, right, name right. of the official character, right? Because they can't let that character go into the um, public commons or whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the worst part of it, I think, is that it requires uh, the component, a miniature platinum sword with the grip and pommel of copper and zinc worth 250 gold pieces. I'll, you know what this spell does? You hit somebody with it, you piss them off, and let them know that you have a piece of jewelry that they can steal <laughs> when they beat you up. That's true. That's very true. The worst part to me, right, is as I we started this video out, bards get magical secrets, which means you can take spiritual weapon. And spiritual weapon, you can upcast. Did you know that? Uh, whenever you upcast spiritual weapon, it does more damage. And, and it ends up, if you cast it with a 7th level slot, doing more damage than this does. Yeah, because what, what's the damage on this? It's, uh, this is 3D. Uh, I think it's 3D10. I might be slightly off. So it will do... So second level spiritual weapon does uh, 1d8, fourth is 2d8, sixth is 3d8 plus mod. All those are plus wisdom mod. So eighth is 4d8 plus mod, which is more than 3d10. So then you can also cast it on all the lower levels, which makes it way, way more flexible. And it also doesn't have concentration, and this has concentration. Yeah, there's... Oh, yeah, concentration. Didn't, uh, didn't even think about that. But, oh, my goodness, 3d10 at seventh level. What a... Oh, the standard bear fireball. What do we get? Uh, uh seven level fireball. Eight D6. Oh, seven level fireball. Uh, yeah. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen D six. Right? It's twelve or thirteen okay. D six. That's better than three D ten by a lot, <laughs> and it hits more things. Yeah. This getting four like and all the summon spells make multi attack have durations of hours. So like that's gonna hit more than this is. The spell has been the spell wasn't good whenever it was initially released. And it has gotten so much worse comparatively with things like Mantle of Star or Crown of Stars or whatever that shoots the little meteors at people that does way more damage than this. That doesn't have concentration attached to it. All the summon spells make this spell substantially worse. Like, like Arcane Sword has only has aged like milk. Only gotten worse over time. You have no desire to put it on your sheet anymore whenever you have just so many better compelling options. Yeah, and you know, before before you write your comments, yes, we know it's a different thing than a fireball and bars don't get fireball or whatever. Okay could they could yes 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 um but yeah the the one to compare it to like you said is spiritual weapon and that's i mean this is this is the arcane casters spiritual weapon yeah and it's it's not as good well here's what i will briefly will touch in on the magical secrets crown of stars is a seventh level spell that does 40 12 radiant damage the bonus action so like and that doesn't take your concentration so that's just more damage Less hazards and less. Yes, you're gated to a specific number of attacks, but that also can be upcast to shoot more attacks. And you're never going to be making more than like five or six attacks with this thing, ever. And at all those instances, you're doing less damage with it anyway. There's no reason to ever take this. All right. Well, what's your worst? Dream of the blue veil. Worst. 
worse than Arcane Sword, Dream of the Blue Veil. I don't even know what that does. So it's like, what if Astral Projection was lower level? (laughs) (laughs) You and up to eight willing creatures fall unconscious for six hours. It's Uh, called drinking. (laughs) If the spell reads its full duration, the visions conclude. So you see visions of other planes. So like other worlds, like Eberron, Kryn, or Tortle, right? This is a way to travel between different game settings, basically. And... For that reason, it has no business existing. If you want to travel between game systems and settings, ask your DM or your DM will be like, hey, I'm bored of playing in this pretend world. We're going to move to Eberron. And everyone's going to be like, cool. And then you'll shift to Eberron like nothing ever happened. You don't need a codified way to do that. That can result in you just being unconscious for six hours and getting irreversibly killed by the random wandering kobolds that find your stuff. You also need an item for the world of existence in any way, which again makes this a DM feature, not even a spell, right? Like the fact that you have to have something from this other world to be able to go there in the first place means your DM has to say you're going to this world and then make you spend a spell slot on it. Make you spend a known spell on it. Not what? cool, DM. Not cool. Agreed. Just get them taken there. Oh my god. Stupid spells for stupid people. Don't take this spell. It's yeah, stupid. Oh, that Yeah, that might be worse than a hand sword. <laughs> This one kind of like actively does nothing. Arcane sword, you can still be like, "Yo, the bonus action, three d ten, a couple of rounds." And like at its floor, I agree that then it's fine, but it's so much worse than all the comparable options. Is why arcane sword's bad. It insults me. Yeah. All right. Uh, That was our that was our list. What do you think? Uh, Let us know down in the comments. Some other. the fun oh, fact yeah, on my yeah, little wanna... my little bard article, I even mentioned spells to avoid dreaming the blue veil and arcane sword, so that's cute. Um, reverse another some magical secret stuff. Reverse gravity is a baller time if you want to be a bard that loves chaos. Reverse gravity is right up your alley, and most importantly, simulacrum is a spell you're allowed to legally take. And uh, go watch that video about why that spell's busted and shouldn't be allowed because that's a really compelling magical secret. Uh, yeah. So if you want to do busted things, those are your options. They have fun with it. You got the access to the best and low spells in the game. Don't be stuck with Regenerate yes. or <laughs> Dream of the Blue Veil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those were our seventh level picks for Bard spells. Uh, go back and watch Cantrips through level six and stay tuned for levels eight and nine. And go look at our other spell lists that we've done and, and the other spell videos that we've done. Full and, article about the Bard class and what magical yeah. secrets you can take and how it works. All that's on the Caverns Creature website, too. Yeah, and if I remember, I'll even link to that. Wow. Yeah. So go go look at all that, and uh, yeah, thank you. Um, leave some comments, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it; a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, or you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.